Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals here. In this video, we are going to cover one of the true modeling fundamentals, which nobody really talks about. It's really one of the most important ones which I've come across. And as far as I know, nobody's really done this. No. So maybe one person. Maybe one person. <laughs> so what we, we just going to start here by showing you some practical examples of what we're talking about here. The main topic here is virtual ordering, and in order to talk really about what virtual ordering is, we just got to show you what issues it causes. Because <laughs> yeah. otherwise, we're just going to be in this theoretical limbo where you can't use it for anything. So let's have a pra practical example here. So we have a head, which uh, perfectly symmetrical head, uh, or a face. And we can duplicate this, and we can move this to the side here now. So we can now make a blend shape of this just by we can do a change here. So now if we were to connect these two, I hit the space bar, deform, blend shape. And now if we enable this, it works. Hurrah, this is expected. So let's try something which is looks very similar, but is actually quite different. Let's do the same thing here where we duplicate this guy. We move it down. And now we delete half and we merge it back together again. So I want to point out moving it down or to the side makes uh, literally no difference. Yeah, <laughs> this is only I won't purely moving it down and just so it's in the center. Yeah. So make sure history is deleted. And then we just go to shift right mouse button mirror, and just go to merge threshold and set this to a 0 0.1. So these meshes here now should be identical. You can see the stats over here. There is actually no difference between mm. them. So, but what happens when you now blend shape? Yeah, any? my God, what happens <laughs> now? So let's do the same thing here. Do this super nice little shape. We select this. We select that. We do the same thing. We had a blend shape, and this is killing me now. What could happen? It goes crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so this is now the question. Why does this here go absolutely crazy? Yeah. This is something that I'm sure a bunch of you guys have seen. And this is something I was seeing as well for years, where suddenly this would go crazy and I would have no idea mm. because it's the same. Yeah, surely it's the same. Uh, another practical example here is in, in ZBrush. We have a model here. We sculpt a bit on it. We need to do UVs for it. We're importing this in now. And now you're like, wait a minute. Topology has changed. And but you it's exactly the same. Yeah, it's exactly the same. So in this example here, the only thing we did is export it out um, and did, uh, added a UV map for it and then import back in again. And of course, split it in half as well. Yeah. Why does this change here? Well, this has to do with vert reordering and the vert IDs. So let's look at a specific example here. So here you can see nice little numbers. This is the component ID. We can find this under display polygons component ID and vertices. This is also the longest menu in the world to get out. <laughs> <laughs> so what you can see here is that now every single po every single point, every single vertex has its own, own ID. Mm. And it always starts with zero. So it starts zero, one, two, four, and just goes on. So here, this is systematic, but this could also be all over the place. Yeah. And in most cases, this doesn't matter. Like what you care about is the shape. You care about this. Does it look good or not? And it wants to start extruding stuff and you start merging stuff together. This here goes a bit crazy. Normally, that is not an issue. But again, let's do the same thing here now. We're duplicating this guy. And um, now we're just moving these out here. And let's do this. Let's blend shape these two together. And what's going to happen now is you see the point 20 goes to point 20, or this point here goes to this point. Uh, point 21 goes there, and this is repeatable. The only thing a blend shape here is doing is this ID here goes to the corresponding ID on the other side here. And like right now, the plane that Henning moved down up has uh, local transforms on it. Mm, so yeah. that's why it's not moving to the other point 20 yeah. or point zero, or whatever. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, good point. So yeah, you can see here, point 0.5 went to point 0.5. And this is all it's doing. So what happens now if we uh, we take away the blend shape? Oh, so, let me undo it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is undo all this and delete this. I know blend shape, control sh or shift alt D to kill the history on it. And let's do the same thing now. We uh, duplicate it and now we delete half. Oh, you see the point order changed <laughs> already. And let's set this here too. 
0 0.01. Again, this is the same in terms of stats. But see here what Morton was talking about now, the point where it's changed. 0 used to be here, it's now down here. So if we, na we now blend shape this, we don't even have to do anything to it now. We can just do, <laughs> let's just do the same thing. But like, yeah, same thing here. You could just blend shape it you already. You could straight up just blend shape it. So take this into this and uh, blend shape and do the same thing now. What's going to happen is everything goes crazy. The thing is, it doesn't go crazy at all. This is this is a very, very expected result. Yeah, Maya does exactly what you're telling it to yeah. do. <laughs> you're just not expecting the point under to have changed. Yeah, exactly. And that's actually a really good point. This is not a bug or anything. No, this no. here is, you're doing, <laughs> you're just doing what you told it to. <laughs> you're to you told, you, the blend ship isn't some magical tool here or like UV transfer or UV transferring. There is no magical tool which is intelligent. These tools here are not smart. These tools here are just very technical. Yeah. Point zero goes to point zero, which is why, as you can see, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Like a magic. Yeah, like magic. So <laughs> how can we fix this? That's a big question now. So Maya recently introduced tools, I think it was in 2017, which uh, in Maya 2017, which actually allows you to fix this. Before mm. the way you fixed this was you would scream at the monitor <laughs> and uh, you would hope that would maybe resolve it. Uh, all studios also had proprietary tools. Yeah, There was not a single studio which didn't have that. Another tool which is also great for this is actually Houdini. Houdini is and it's so fast. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That might be a tutorial for future times. <laughs> Just got to get a hold of like <laughs> side effects first. Like, hey, yeah. Can we have a license to <laughs> make one video? I've, that's the only thing I know how to do in Houdini. Yeah, the same. <laughs> so um, there are two tools here to, which we can use. And that is under Edit Mesh. And we have Reorder Vertices. And then we have under Mesh. And we have Transfer Vertex Order. These tools, they sound very different or sound very similar, but they're doing different things. We're going to start with this one, which is under Edit Mesh and Reorder Words. Before we do this, it's super important. This can't have any history on it. So Shift Alt D. I smash this all the time just to make <laughs> sure there's nothing here. Uh, well, this is Freeze Transform as well, just to make sure because these tools are a bit fiddly. Sometimes they break for no apparent reason. So, so if, save your work before you do any yeah. of this. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> so we. We, let's go under here, uh, Edit Mesh, and let's find Reorder Words. So what this here is doing is you are now setting zero. Where is zero, one, two on this? So the tool here is telling you set the, set the first, second, and third, and then just do that. So zero, one, two. So you can see what happens now, repeatable. This is zero, one, two. We just select that. We can do the same thing here now, and zero, one, two. So now everything just kind of spirals around this. This is really useful because mm -hmm. now you can control your model. I, of, I often do this after I'm done modeling, just so then I can just control where zero one two is. Yeah, and it'll always follow the same pattern. Mm -hmm. So if you do this to another mesh, that's exactly the same in terms of topology. You'll always follow the same logic. Yeah. So this is super cool, uh, but we we want to have a separate tool as well, which is transferring the vertex order. So let's set this is here. And now we have uh, one guy which is down here. And uh, we can hit the G key to get the same tool up and going. And now we have 0, 1, 2 here. So based on what we just learned, this is now going to go crazy. So like this and select that. The way I'm thinking in terms of like the order for blend shapes is this is tricky because some things is <laughs> is like master slave or child parent and some is the opposite. Yeah. The way I'm thinking about this is I want this to control that. So in my mind, I'm doing this. <laughs> I'm doing uh, master slave. This controls that. I think about it in a like I want to transfer this shape to this shape. Yes. That, that's how like, I remember. It, it's tricky. Like yeah. this would this would be super easy if Maya was consistent with selection order. But it's different for parent constraints and then you have yeah. other kinds of I mean it's Yeah like stuff. general parenting is the opposite I think. Yeah yeah. So it's confusing. So now let's do a simple blend shapes here. And let's see what happens. Ta da what a surprise. What a surprise. Exactly <laughs> what we expected to happen would happen. So now we want to actually fix this. So we can now go under, let's just select um, mesh and transfer vertex order. And now we can do this 0, 1, 2. Or well, actually, it doesn't matter which one it is, as long as it's the same one. Tick, tick, tick. And now you can see now this here should blend shape. So if we just do something to it, so we can actually just show you. 
this and that. And then we do deform bunch shape. And there we go. Excellent. We just fixed <laughs> it now. So these two tools here are super useful. Mm. So first one is select, define where it is. The second one is to transfer it. So now we understand it on this guy. Let's show a slightly more complicated example, which is the face. So let's do this again. Let's um, duplicate the face and let's delete half. Well, actually, when I'm deleting half, I just prefer to just select it here, just because I know that's just a bit cleaner. Yeah. There's also a really good reason why when, because I've worked on, on base meshes before, where inside the mouth, people tend to, I don't know, go a little bit rogue with the topology, mm. but it's super useful for any modeler and rigger if you have a consistent way of selecting, if you can just select the, the strip of polys that go down the center, yeah. that's, that makes your life easier. Yeah, it really does. So now let's do the same thing here. And uh, we do mirror, set this. M the merge threshold is usually fine. I just don't trust it. There's <laughs> always like one little thing here. So again, we can see these are identical. Um, we try to blend ship these two together. It's gonna go a bit crazy. Boom. So let's fix this. Same thing we did before. Uh, first, delete history, make sure that's gone. And then instead of moving it down, I'm gonna move to the side, just so it's a bit easier for me to see. And now we need to use a transfer tool here. So we need to first be, we're gonna transfer from this onto this. This is the master one. This model here might have been published. Mm. You can't touch this at all. So let's do to mesh. Transfer vertex order. So this has to be on a single polygon. You can't select one, two, and three. It has to be in a single polygon here. So one, two, and three. And they're the same thing on the exact same polygon. Which I believe was this. Ah. No. Nope. Was it the same? <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually a really annoying so issue. So what I always do here is I always start from a pole, mm -hmm. actually, because I always yeah. know from a pole because there's always a limited amount of poles. So let's like this, this, and this. Yes. It's actually a great example because <laughs> this is actually an issue I'm having all the time. And particularly if your model gets dense, mm -hmm. this is really, really hard to yeah, figure out where you're so Because quads just look the same. Yeah. But having a pole is an excellent way to like pinpoint this is where I want to select from. So let's do this again. <laughs> Transfer vertex order. Tick, tick, tick. And then we do the same thing here. This is annoying because now all the rigors already are selected. So select this again. And now it's worked. Yeah. So this is what I mean by the tool being a bit fiddly, mm. that sometimes stuff is actually selected. So um But that doesn't impact your, your vert reordering. As soon as you start selecting again, yes. it just goes like oh, okay, I reset exactly. the selection. So now let's move this out here and do just move it out. And now let's try this again. Ta -da. So this works now because the only thing which happened is this number here is going to that number there. Nothing fancy going on. So let's show two more things here. One is if we go under here, we can now see the ID of it. Like this is useful. <laughs> But it's crazy. And especially with denser meshes, this just becomes impossible. Yeah. The reason we actually only have a face here is because this would just be too, this was just too aggressive when we saw the back side of the head. So this is a bit insane. So let's disable this again. So we can now just select the points here, which is pretty useful. But you can actually see what they are. But you can also, let's say you want to select a specific point here. You can now go onto your script editor and you now have a little line of code here. And it just select select this vert here. So now we can just select select this vert. Now we can just run it. I control enter just to run this. And I was just gonna select this vert here. Also, whenever I'm done modeling, like I said, I usually prefer to manually set where zero one two is. Because I might have to I might have mirrored this across a bunch of times here. So I just prefer to again delete history and edit mesh and reorder verts and just go zero one two. It's like, it's strictly not speaking not necessary because you do have the vertex transfer tool. Mm. I just think it's, I just think it's a clean now that I control where it is. So, cause then you just have a, you just have a thing which is just the same for the model and it's, 
once the model is now published, it's just it's just a clean thing to do. Yeah. So this was a lot of stuff about virtual ordering here. <laughs> it really is one of the fundamental things which I think is super important to understand as a modeler here. Especially when you're going a lot between ZBrush and Maya, you might mm. be changing your model, something that's already been published, other people are picking it up, yeah. um, for example, rigging. Yeah. It's it's really, it's something you have to know in order to make your life and everyone else's life yeah. easier. And even just on personal projects, like, mm. the, like that, this is how I discovered. I didn't learn to fix until it was in production, <laughs> but I, I I realized it was a problem. Like yeah. when we showed before with the ZBrush stuff, where suddenly the model just would go a bit crazy in ZBrush. Yeah, and I think important to remember, like the, it's not the software's fault. No, it's technically your fault. Yeah, um, the software does what you tell it to do. Yeah, and that, that's all it can do. It's not a super smart computer or anything. Yeah. So if you if you have any any other clever ways of doing virtual ordering here. If you have any, if there are any cool scripts you might have or uh, just different ways of doing this, we'd love to hear it as well. Mm. Like we said, the tools here are a bit fiddly. Yeah. Um, they can be a bit tricky to work with sometimes and sometimes it just goes a bit crazy. So <laughs> like you saw in our case. So um, yeah, we hope you enjoyed this uh, modeling fundamentals video. Yeah, and thanks so much for watching. If you want to see more content like this, just make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Thanks guys.